All right, everybody. Um, Maude is joining us via phone. And so I'm going to put my phone on speaker. And please tell me in the chat if there's a problem hearing her. And later on today, I will send out the slides, her slide deck. So um, everyone, I want to introduce you to Dr. Maude Vinay from the Grenoble Quantum Computing Initiative. And here, let me put this on speaker. Okay, Maude, go ahead. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm happy to be finally on stage. Um, it's a, a little bit later in my talk that I like. I'm not sure if this is actually my first talk without slides. So um, I always went of doing that. So let's try to do that. Uh, what I was planning to tell you about uh, today was about uh, three of four things. Um, where am I coming from? I want to give you an idea of uh, my journey uh, in physics. And uh, then uh, how I see my working adventure, and uh, that has led me to quantum silicon Grenoble. And I want to tell, uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, the Grenoble quantum ecosystem that uh, Sharon already introduced you to uh, in the first session. So first, uh, let me go back to uh, where I'm coming from. When when I was a little girl, I had two patients uh, that were playing basketball and uh, skiing, being uh, outside the trails uh, somewhere in the mountains. And it happened that um, what I was doing when I was home was also... Um, uh, trying to understand the world around me and uh, building things, leveraging uh, physics phenomenon. And one of uh, my first patients was uh, building water milk. Um, I, I built tens of them trying to improve uh, looking at the way the water was flowing and trying to uh, leverage uh, everything I do so that my water milk uh, turned always faster. Um, basically, you will see that uh, my career reflects a lot um, these three uh, passions that I had when I was a little girl. Because um, when I finished in college, uh, the first thing uh, that I did was um, joining the School of Physics and Engineering in Grenoble. Um, so that was wonderful for me because I, uh, I had the physics and the engineering part where I was using physics to do my and it was in front of us where I could do a lot of that was perfect time. Um, what happened is that I broke my ACL three times and uh, I had to give up on the key so to focus more to be challenging your aim. So I jumped uh, to the QA in physics uh, in, uh, that I got uh, that I studied in 2000. From the University of Grenoble, and I was a PhD in quantum physics, fundamental physics. That was very interesting, uh, but that was a little bit frustrating because I was one of the few researchers in the world interested in what I was doing. So what happened at the same time? Uh, there was each of the conductor in Grenoble in Grenoble where they were trying to. Uh, find solutions to move slow and looking for physicists. So um, that's when I joined the semiconductor industry as a transistor integration and device engineer. And uh, that was wonderful for me because it was physics engineering and I was part of the team. So I, in spite of my broken ACL, I could have uh, the impression of being a team player again. Okay, so let's see a picture on we're going to the adventurous part of my life when uh, with my whole family we had the opportunity uh, and it's really a job opportunity to go to Albany, New York and join ICN Alliance uh, with uh, microelectronics, the Shida and a lot of uh, semiconductor um, companies to work on uh, at the cinema. So I spent four years in, uh, in New York State uh, where I learned that everything is possible. 
All right. You spent four years in New York. Yep. Four years in, in New York when, where I learned that uh, everything was as good as you wanted. And so um, when I came back to uh, France, I was appointed uh, as an administrative manager where basically I was working for more slow and trying to find solutions to uh, scaling of transistors. And part of one activity of my lab, uh, because I kept the links with my PhD lab, was uh, looking at the uh, quantum properties of uh, scale transistors. And that's where we started to uh, really looking at our transistors to design spin qubits. So you see that uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, work journey has uh, be made of a lot of uh, opportunities and uh, it turned out that um, uh, when I was back in Grenoble, uh, there were three people that were uh, leading uh, groups in Grenoble. So I had my group working on uh, Simon and Moslo. Uh, Somini was leading a quantum engineering group. Um, in CNRS, close that. And Susanna de Franceschi was leading the uh, group that was studying quantum properties of silicon nanostructure. So we had uh, more or less um, uh, all our uh, activities, but we were doing a lot of brainstorming together. And I'm very frustrated that you don't see my slides because I have a nice picture of uh, the three of us partying with lots of beer. And we had the idea, uh, the three of us, to use the silicon spin qubit, uh, the, the cell transistors to design silicon spin qubit. Um, that was a need from me uh, to justify the, the, the energy and the time that I was spending with uh, the physicists. Uh, the need to show my management that it could have some application. Uh, what I was doing, and for Tristan and Tivano, that was an opportunity to have access to um, very good samples. So um, we had some more uh, passionate brainstorming, so some more, meeting some more peers, and uh, the three of us we decided to um, uh, make a proposal and try to use our different uh, our uh, our silicon samples to design a silicon spin qubit. And uh, we were late as compared to the other system, so what we looked at was um, what the, the, the question we tried to answer was can you can we uh, use our silicon spin qubit to uh, address large scale quantum computing? So um, in 2016, we made the first uh, demonstration of uh, a a silicon spin qubit with a uh, CMOS technology, so that was the uh, first worldwide demonstration. And we, we proposed an idea uh, on how to build a large scale quantum computer. Uh, this idea was actually granted a New York Synergy grant, uh, which is a, a, a European excellence grant. And uh, our company decided that uh, they were going to help and support us so that we have more ambition than just uh, demonstrating the proof of concept and that we, were, we could try to um, bring our idea to a, a industrial maturity. So um, that's, uh, that's a, a wonderful uh, adventure because we started recruiting people uh, around us the engineering teams with uh, guys from uh, IT design, uh, um, RF, uh, RF circuit design, uh, from uh, cryogening, from uh, low-level software, from architecture, and now we're a team of 50% uh, person um, a institution team because we're people from CA, from the CNRS, and uh, multidisciplinary team, we've got people from computer science, from IT uh, design, from technology, people from physics, 
um, people from quantum engineering, and we are all together uh, trying to build a, a large quantum computer. So we had our first demonstration in 2016. We made some improvement uh, in 2018. Now we're aiming at six uh, untangled qubits by 2021 to have a prototype of at least 100 qubits by 2024. Um, this is the roadmap of the uh, quantum silicon vulnerable. And um, well, I, uh, to finish the, the description of what's going on in vulnerable, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about our ecosystem. And uh, the chance that we have is that the uh, vulnerable is called the French silicon uh, uh, valley, as uh, Sharon told you, meaning that. Uh, there is already a strong ecosystem uh, in physics and in uh, semiconductor. And um, there is also a long history, long standing history of uh, a relationship between uh, the research ecosystem and the industry, and there is an entrepreneurship um, um, feeling, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what, what happened is that. Um, uh, All right, everybody, Maud is talking about the ecosystem. She just talked about the roadmap for 100 qubits by 2024. All right, Maud, I'm sorry. I've never had connectivity issues, but I'm having them today. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not thinking that I'm the bad dog. Uh, um, so I love the connection, so I, I hope it's something else. Um, yeah, just, to, just to conclude, I, I want to point out that uh, in Bonoco, we would get the chance really to have the big uh, semiconductor industry um, ecosystem and to have this relationship between fundamental research and applied research that I, I've been uh, uh, 